guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla, and if you're not new, thanks for coming back. Always happy to have you. If you are new here, I like to do a lot of book, beauty, and lifestyle content. I am also a first year seventh grade teacher, so I do film a lot of the days in the life of being a first year teacher, especially teaching in a pandemic. So if any of those things interest you, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and stick around. Today's video is one that I am super, super excited about. I mentioned it in one of my Vlogmas vlogs that after I finished college, which was in December, that I wanted to really read more and watch more books. Those are kind of some of my goals for post-grad life. And I think I'm doing pretty okay. My most recent obsession, and honestly the world's most recent obsession, has been the Bridgerton franchise. So today I'm super excited to give you all of my thoughts on Bridgerton the show, Bridgerton the book. I read the first one, The Duke and I. We will talk about it all and I will tell you right now that this video will be split into two parts. One will be a spoiler free review for my friends that have not seen the show or watched the movie at all yet and my second will be a spoiler filled review for those of us that just want to spill the tea. Speaking of tea, I have been watching a lot of Darling Desi's um, YouTube videos here on YouTube. I'll leave her linked down below but she talks a lot about like romanticizing your life and just putting a little bit more extra energy and effort into the things that you love. So for today's video, Bridgerton gives me all of the British Edwardian Victorian vibes. I donned a cardigan simply for this video, but I think I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea and quickly whip up some cookies to bake in the oven to have while we discuss this video and then we'll have a little Bridgerton style tea party to talk about these things. So let's head to the kitchen, let's go make some tea and whip up some cookies really fast. minutes to break break to bake and then we will go check on those and make up some tea but while we're waiting I figured I'd give you guys a rundown a little synopsis of Bridgerton so Bridgerton started as a book series written by Julia Quinn there are eight books in the series I have the first one here with me this is Bridgerton one the Duke and I but Bridgerton as a whole in both the books and in the TV shows is set in like a Victorian Edwardian England um, and it's like their courting season in England so a lot of eligible bachelors are getting set up with um, women of nobility and from good families and they are kind of in their courting season where everybody is like going on dates and going to balls and going for walks in Hyde Park and whatever it may be um, before getting engaged and married. So this series in this book focuses on the Bridgerton family who is a pretty well off, pretty well known family living in London. Um, we have Violet who is the head of the household but we're really focusing on the oldest daughter Daphne and this is her in the show I think it's her first season out um, and in the book this is actually her second season. She is trying to find a suitable husband and her older brother Anthony is kind of in charge of her courtship. He is best friends with a duke who is returning to London. He's been a while 
away for quite some time and this duke does not want to get married he's refusing to get married um and he's best friends with daphne's older brother anthony daphne and the duke simon um simon of hastings they kind of make this plan together because he doesn't want to get married and he is sick of getting badgered by people to get married and she is really struggling to find a suitable husband decide to pretend to be courting each other it's the pretend lovers trope of romance that I do quite enjoy. They're pretending to be in love and there's a lot more that goes into this plot but the whole story centers around them faking this attachment, this arrangement together and as we all know with lovers tropes or false lovers tropes they end up falling in love. Um, so that is a brief synopsis of what happens in season one and in the book. I do know that the other eight books or seven books I guess each book focuses on a different of the Bridgerton siblings. So there are seven of them. Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, Gregory, and Hyacinth. So each of them get their own book. My edition of the book, if I can find it, came with a handy dandy little map family tree of all of the Bridgerton children and the books that focus on them. So this was The Duke and I, the first one about Daphne and the Duke of Hastings. So let's get into my spoiler free review um, of both the TV show and the book. First things first, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I absolutely loved this series um, or like what I've read of the book so far and the TV show. I think that this is Netflix, Netflix is one of their most bingeable shows I've ever watched. I watched this show while I was on my February break from school and I literally watched it in less than a day. Like there's only eight episodes, they're about an hour each, so naturally I spent an entire day watching Bridgerton because once it started I just had to know what happened. So it's very easy to get sucked in and watch. It's honestly addicting as a TV show. I will say I did not say feel that same energy with the book. I would say if you are interested in the book or the TV show or both of them to read the book first because the, the TV show expands a lot on the world built into this book um, and just fleshes it out really wonderfully that the book almost was disappointing in comparison to the TV show because they just did such a phenomenal job with the TV show. But I feel like if I had read this first, I would have really liked it and then just appreciated how much effort the show put into the world and the whole like storyline. But because I watched the show first, I was expecting so many of those added details in the book that don't, don't exist, like they're not there. I think this is a really great historical romance and I've always kind of shied away from them, but this is just like, juicy, fun, lighthearted reading that really opened up a whole genre for me that I'm really excited about. I love the Edwardian and Victorian period. I love England. I studied abroad in Oxford. So it was just like an environment and a time period that I am like especially fond of. So I'm excited now that I know that I like historical fiction or historical romance to maybe find a whole new slew of books to read. The TV show is honestly so aesthetically pleasing and the people are so beautiful. It has a pretty diverse cast, which isn't necessarily reflected in the book, but I do really appreciate being in the show, which is awesome. So it's a fast watch, not as fast of a read, but it's a fast watch. It's super exciting to see. You just get so sucked in, so addicted. It's beautiful to watch and it's a great, I think intro to the historical romance subgenre. Um, I will say I think the people or certain people made the show seem a lot more smutty than it was but like if you watched Outlander I felt like Bridgerton was less smutty than than Outlander and some people were only in it for like the sexy times which I wasn't like opposed to but not super invested in either but it did kind of scare me I was like I don't just kind of want to be watching a porno so it's not like that, I can tell you that right off the bat. The show is not like that. The book only, I feel like, is a little bit more because Julia Quinn got away with, with words. But other than that, it's not anything super crazy that made me uncomfortable by any means. I think in the books, certain characters are developed more and then in the TV shows, 
other characters are developed a little bit more. The TV show features a lot of side stories and kind of gives us a little bit more that the book doesn't necessarily give you. So the book is just, I think, a, like a, a pared down version. It really, really only focuses on the Duke and Daphne. So I think that's why it's important to read this to really understand where the reference, like where, what the whole show's based on. Like, it's supposed to focus on this relationship between the Duke and Daphne and then the show kind of gives you those other side stories that you might want to read about in a separate book. I do think that the Bridgerton TV show has been cleared for eight more seasons. I don't know if it's actually going to run for the eight seasons. I think that might be a little overkill. But I do know it's at least approved for one more and I know that they started filming season two in Uxbridge in this month, March 2021. So there is definitely a season two in the work. The TV show, I think, moves at a really solid pace, especially because they add things in. It doesn't seem like it could, like it's not super rushed. Whereas if they were to just take what's in this book, it would probably only end up being three or four episodes long, but it's eight episodes long because they dive into those other side lines and storylines. That being said, be warned when you get to the end of the TV show, you are going to want more so badly and you are going to be sad that it's over. Um, I will say I got my sister to watch this show and like she didn't watch Outlander. She doesn't really get into period dramas or anything like that. And she also binge watched this show in like less than a day. Must run in the family. Um, so if you're not sure if this is really something for you, I know that a lot of people that wouldn't normally watch shows like this really enjoyed it. So definitely step outside your comfort zone and try Bridgerton as a TV show. So overall, my review, without any spoilers, because we're going to get into those and I'm very ready, of the Bridgerton book, I gave this four stars on Goodreads, but I would honestly say it's probably more like three and a half. Um, and I'll talk about that in my spoiler filled section coming up. So if you want to stick around for that, that's fine. Um, in the TV show, I would definitely get five out of five stars. Like I was literally addicted, insane. Um, there's an official playlist on Spotify for Bridgerton that has all of the songs from the show. That's cookies. Um, but they kind of take modern songs and do instrumental versions of them. And the, the soundtrack is just amazing. It's been my go-to focus playlist lately. All right, cookies aren't quite done yet, but we will get to those. So for my friends, my real ones here that already have seen the show or are thinking about the book or vice versa, let's get into the tea of Bridgerton. This would be an excellent time to have a cup of tea. I'm waiting for the cookies though, bear with me. Bridgerton the book versus the TV show. The TV show I would say is 10 times better than the first book, um, which maybe is a controversial opinion. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about the book versus the TV show. Even in like my book nerd circle, not a ton of talk about the books um, versus the TV show. I've heard a lot of comparison of the first book to the second, but not of the book to the TV show. Personally, I loved the TV show and thought it was way better than the book. I think just because I know myself as a reader who needs the world building and like needs it to be super in depth and lush, the TV show did that a lot better for me than the book. The book and the TV show are different, but the descriptions just could have built that world a little bit better for me. Um, just because the Edwardian and Victorian period of England is so rich in culture and detail that I feel like Julia Quinn could have spent a lot more time on it. But this book literally, literally, literally only talks about Daphne and the Duke Simon, which I get it. It's they're, they're the couple of focus in this book. However, the TV show has a lot more side stories that I was super interested in. Um, and a lot of aspects that I think were fleshed out a bit better than in the book. For example, the Featheringtons. Gaudy as they are, they have that girl, I cannot remember for the life of me her name. I want to say it's Georgia, but I don't think it is. The girl who's there that's pregnant, she not even talked about in this book. The friendship between Eloise and Penelope Featherington, 
not discussed about. We actually don't even ever see Eloise in this book, which is super disappointing because Eloise was one of my favorite characters of the TV show because she's so sassy and she just wants to like do her own thing and be a powerful woman and we just don't see that. So things like that that you might have really enjoyed about the TV show are not going to be in this book. So don't get your hopes up because I kept waiting for the Featheringtons and that pregnancy scandal that never came. Also, for example, um, that kind of side story where the prince of, I think, Prussia is trying to court Daphne never happens. There's no mention. The Queen of England played a really, really strong role in the TV show. And she's like not even really mentioned in the book. So she was this super beautiful character, super over the top, like a powerhouse dominating female figure, especially when she had that king that was, you know, not super well. She was definitely the more powerful of the two. And I was excited to see that on the page and she never actually shows up. And I do think that courtship with the prince that's from the TV show does a lot to kind of create that conflict and that tension between Daphne and Simon. And I wanted to see that unfold in the book. Like basically, I think what I was hoping for was a novelization of the Bridgerton season one. And that's not quite what the first Bridgerton novel is. So just be warned if you're thinking about picking up the book, they're not going to be exactly the same. There were also aspects of characters that were super well developed in the TV show that were just frankly lacking in the book. For example, um, I really appreciated that Daphne was an avid musician. She was composing, which was not super common for the time. Like girls did play instruments, but they weren't necessarily composing at that time. So it was super wonderful to see that on screen. And I really wanted to hear more from Daphne about her passion for music in the book. But that like she literally never touches a piano and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like that was one of the, I think, coolest parts of Daphne is she's not just a wallflower and a pretty face, but she also has a creative mind and a passion for the arts that we just don't see on the page. That like she mostly just jokes about how she can't do math and that she's just trying to like be a mom and, and a good wife, which is of course what she's trying to do in this courting month. But there was just, I feel like so much more depth to Daphne in the character version, the on-screen version. She's definitely still very witty and sassy, which I do appreciate out of Daphne in the book. Like she has that quick wit humor that I really love and she's not afraid to kind of like talk back to people, but she was also a little self-deprecating and like she very much harps on the fact that she's like not the girl that people would want to marry. Like she understate, like she keeps over and over saying, I understand why you wouldn't love me or why you wouldn't want to marry me or why I'm still single. And it's just like, girlfriend, have a little bit more confidence in yourself. Like, come on. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Duke of Hastings, Simon was, I think, more well-developed in the book. He doesn't show a ton of emotion, like, on, like, he doesn't elaborate on his feelings and emotions in the TV show. Like, he just gets angry and he fights someone or he goes and he boxes or he storms away in a huff. But we see more of his thought process and where that anger comes from. And we also like when he's being a dick, we kind of see him feel guilty for that. You get more of an emotional spectrum out of the Duke in the book than you did in the TV show. Um, this moved a lot faster and kind of glossed over a lot of things. They separate for like two months in this book and I'm just like, Will one of you talk to the other? Like, what the heck? Like, this is not what I signed up for. So there are definitely those big differences that things weren't fleshed out as well, or they just didn't have as much detail as in the TV show, which was a bit disappointing because I feel like it's usually the opposite. Like that there is so much detail in the book that they can't fit into a TV show or movie. None of those side stories existed in the book, which made it just a little bit boring to to just talk about Daphne and the Duke. Like, just the tiniest, like I just need something else to go for me. Like there wasn't even really the pressure to figure out who Lady Whistledown was, which was I feel like a major aspect of the TV show was like the hunt to discover Whistledown. And that didn't, like they don't even really question who Whistledown is until the epilogue. And I'm like, 
when are we going to reveal who it is? Like, when are we all going to care about who this is? And they never do in the first book, which like, that was kind of fun for me watching the show was to be like, okay, I think it's Eloise. Like, I think Lady Whistledown is actually Eloise because she was here at this time or whatever. Like trying to guess who it was. I, I feel like in books, especially in romances, there's just like super sweet romantic scenes that I always really love and appreciate like for example when I read the Shiver trilogy by Maggie Stiefvater when I read A Court of Thorns and Roses like I flag the romantic parts because they just make my little romantic English major heart sing right and I wanted some more of those that we didn't see on screen and there were less less than the ones that we saw on screen and you're just kind of like like just the little romantic sweet moments between them that really just like make you root for them we don't we don't see in the book but I did give it three out of five stars I think it's a really good concept and I think even just developing the character of the Duke of Hastings a little bit more in the book made it worth the read I also think it was still a pretty quality book and I do want to read some of the others in the series but it just didn't steal my heart as much as the tv show did I don't I don't know like it just was a book that left me wanting more. And I feel like watching the TV show, I'm like, Julia Quinn, why did you not put in that scene? Like, why did you not make, you know, the scandal with the feathering tins? I do think it's still a good read, especially if you're trying to get into new genres. Like for me, this was the first historical romance I've ever read. And now I just picked up another one. I just picked up Bringing Down the Duke um, by Edie Blake, I think. The costuming, the cast, the soundtrack, like just, I took film studies classes in college, like the lighting, the camera angles, the detail, just the shooting, all of it was stunning. Like it was probably one of the most aesthetically pleasing shows that I've ever seen. Um, and it really just made me want to live in Victorian England so I think I was born the wrong time period but yes I do think that the show is fantastic I am anxiously awaiting season two it was so intricately woven like all of those complexities those happenstance meetings who sees who what Lady Whistledown reveals the different twists with the feathering tins um the even like the boxing wasn't in the book and I'm like the boxing was such a big part of the show um the intricacies of that show were I think so well constructed all the applause all the applause to the creators of Bridgerton the book meh three out of five stars made me want more um but it was interesting to see how Julia Quinn really imagined this story unfolding and how those things are different. Editing Kaylee here, my friends. I apologize that I look like this. Um, but I did want to say while I was editing this video, there was one thing that I completely forgot to talk about while I was filming this video, which was the weird, like, sexual kind of assault that happens to Simon. Um, I think seeing his reaction definitely gives it more weight in the TV show but in the book they do a better job or Julia Quinn does a better job addressing it as sexual assault um, than they do in the TV show in the book Daphne though she never really like apologizes for it and they never really have a conversation she does question her own behavior and what she's just done and she even says at one point I remember this vividly her saying did I take advantage of the situation or did I take advantage of him or did I take advantage of both so Daphne definitely knows that like she did not do right here whereas the show there's never really a conversation about that and we don't really see Daphne feel guilt about that and that is obviously a super important topic to bring up and not to ignore so I did appreciate that about the book and I think that's one thing that they definitely did better than the tv show just had to throw that in there I will say the book does give you two epilogues so it does tell you in the future what's going to happen for Duke and I keep wanting to call him Duke for Simon and Daphne and it does give you a little sneak peek of what happens to some of the other characters in the book in the tv show that you don't get right away at the end of season one so 
those are my thoughts on Bridgerton. Now that my cookies are done, I'm going to go pour myself a cup of tea and just enjoy that little treat for myself. Um, but if you've watched Bridgerton or if you've read Bridgerton or if you've read and watched Bridgerton, leave me your thoughts down below. If you have any questions on the TV show or the series of books, have to clarify. If you have any questions on the TV show or the book series, leave me a comment down below or head over to my Instagram at Roy Reading Co. and let me know. This was super fun to do like a nerdy content video again. I haven't done like a book related, TV related video in a long, long time. So it kind of felt good to do this again. So those are my thoughts on Bridgerton overall. I'm still high key obsessed and anxiously awaiting season two. So I will be sure to give you my thoughts on that. And if I keep reading the Bridgerton books, you'll be sure to hear about it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.